I'm Mr. B and today we have this 2007 Volkswagen Passat. It's a B6 generation Passat and it has the 2 liter BPY engine. Uh, the customer complaint on this vehicle is the air conditioning is not working properly. In other words, it's just not cooling like it should. So at first glance, I looked at this vehicle, I got in the car and I have uh, a little bit of an idea of what's going on with the vehicle. I did drive it, the air conditioning is not cooling. Uh, so this has got a variable compressor on it, so it, it diagnoses a little bit differently. But actually, I don't think there's anything wrong with the air conditioning per se. I think it's something, an outside influence onto the air conditioning. So uh, as soon as I got in the car, I noticed that the temperature readout on the dash was reading dash dash or implausible basically. And so the outside temperature or ambient temperature is not being displayed on the dash. So that got me to thinking. I went ahead and I put the vehicle on our Zeus scan tool and pulled some codes and I found out that it had in the instrument cluster, it had a 00779 code, which is an outside air temperature problem. And uh, so I thought this was a great time to show y'all how to diagnose this issue. And so I have the wiring diagram pulled up in my classroom and I have the part laid out and everything. I'm gonna show you how to externally test the part. I'm gonna show you how to test the wiring and making sure that you're getting the right signal going to the wiring. And so all the way from the thermometer to the sensor, I'm gonna show you all how to break it down and how to make sure that this is your problem. So this is something we really need to fix before we go any further on the AC diagnosis because this can actually be a fix of the vehicle. So the ambient temperature is going to report back to the air conditioning system, to the control module that's in the dash, and it's gonna let the AC know that if it's too cold outside, not to run the AC compressor. So when the AC, uh, excuse me, not the AC, but the ambient pressure sensor, ambient temperature sensor, I'm sorry, uh, when it uh, malfunctions, it's going to read like way, way below what it's supposed to read. So I'm gonna go over here to the scan tool. I'm gonna pull up the data PID and show you guys the outside temperature reading. Okay, so I have our Zeus scan tool here. If you have any other scan tool, you need to make sure it's a good scan tool because not all scan tools can uh, read this deep into a system. So we see our instrument cluster here and it says outside air temperature sensor G17, open circuit or short with power. So in other words, there's a circuit break somewhere in there. It could be wiring, it could be the sensor itself. Um, but if you look into the air conditioning module, it says control module and instrument cluster read trouble code. So it's pointing you to, hey, I have a problem with the air conditioning and it's coming from a code that's set in the instrument cluster. So we're gonna go here into diagnose And you can look through TSBs and stuff. I really don't think there's a TSB for this. For code specific scanner data, I'm gonna go in here, just press continue, keep going. So it's gonna go through and it's identifying this. And so there's no data available here, but I'm gonna go to the data list because this should show me what's going on, okay? So moving a little bit further here. So this is what we're looking at here, ambient temperature. Okay, and this is reading in Fahrenheit. If you've got a different scan tool, it might read in Celsius. But if you look at this number right here, this is telling us there's a problem, okay? It's saying it's negative 58 degrees out here, okay? And it's about, in the shop right now, it's about 75, 80 degrees or so. So negative 58 is definitely, you're seeing a red flag here, okay? So this is gonna show you a lot of other PIDs and everything else. Uh, but this negative 58 is giving me a red light, okay? So let me show you what that's gonna look like on the dash. Okay, so this is inside the car and you can see here, I'm gonna zoom in and this is dash, dash, dash for Fahrenheit. So if this was read properly, I would have, you know, around my ambient temperature. These aren't really that, um, accurate because they're located, the temperature sensor itself is located pretty close to the condenser and there's a lot of heat there. So that's why, you know, sometimes if you see people posting, you know, their thermometer picture in the summer and it's so hot, it's 119 degrees outside or whatever, that's really just radiator air being pushed around that sensor and it's causing it to not be accurate. But really the sensor is going to, um, come into effect if the temperature is too low. So 
the more resistance that this circuit has, the cooler it is. So as it warms up, the resistance drops. So positive temperature coefficient uh, thermistor, that, that's what this is on this car. So let's go and look at the wiring diagram. Okay, so I have the wiring diagram pulled up on ShopKey, and this is a big, like, three-page wiring diagram, okay? But all we're worried about right now is the ambient or the outside air temperature sensor. So I've got that part pulled up. I'm going to zoom in and show you just that part. Okay, so our instrument cluster is designated right here. So this is our outside air temperature sensor. You can see it's just a two pin variable resistor and that is a thermistor, okay? So, it's a, so as the temperature goes up and down, our resistance is going to change, all right? So this brown yellow wire right here is going to send our voltage out and then whatever comes back is measured by the instrument cluster and it is transmitted to the AC system through these computer data lines. Okay, so our brown, yellow, our twisted pair wires are gonna come down through here and run all throughout the car. I'm not worried about that. This is the only thing I'm worried about right here. If we get this right, we should get a temperature back on the dash and we should get our AC working at least from this standpoint, okay? So this brown yellow wire comes out. This is gonna run underneath the bumper right at the lower grill, right at the driver's side. And we're gonna show you that uh, when we get back out into the shop. But this is going to carry our five volt reference. So five volts or so are gonna come here and hit this sensor. So we need to make sure that we have five volts at this sensor, okay? And once we have five volts to the sensor, then we know that wire is good and our instrument cluster is sending the correct amount of voltage out. So we measure there, if we don't get five volts, five volts, excuse me, to this brown yellow wire, uh, we know we have a problem coming from there. We may have a bad instrument cluster, we may have a cut wire some, somewhere. So we need to look at pin 36 at the instrument cluster and make sure that we have uh, five volts or so coming out of that, okay? So you're not gonna have battery voltage here, you're gonna have reference voltage, which is five volts, okay? So this voltage comes through here, it runs through there, and then we have to have some voltage. Now this voltage coming out of this is going to change, okay? Because the load is going to change. As the load changes, our voltage is going to be less. So when this is colder, I should be expecting less voltage coming out of pin one. As it warms up outside, then the, then the resistance is going to go down and the voltage is going to go up reporting back to the instrument cluster and that's how this whole thing works. So then we get a temperature on the instrument cluster and the instrument cluster is going to communicate with the car what the outside temperature is. So let's go on uh, back out to the shop and I'll show you where this is located and also how to test this sensor externally. Okay, so I have this grill off right here. This uh, just pops off. Um, you just, you know, give it a good yank or you may have to put a trim tool in here just to pry this loose a little bit. And the sensor is going to be right here. See that right there? That is where the sensor lives. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. All right. So to take this sensor off, super easy. We just pull this. It has a little clip here and then we are going to this clip is actually broken but there should be a clip here that you pull this car has had some front end damage and that may be why this this sensor uh, might be messing up but you have your one and your two right here and that is going to uh, tell me what wire uh, goes where so the little tiny sensor here and uh, let's get our meter and see what we got as far as voltage going to this plug. Okay, so I have my meter right here. This is a snap-on. It's a really nice meter. Uh, you don't need anything this nice. $35 meter will do this. So I'm going to take my yellow and brown wire right here. And I'm going to put my red side, set my meter to voltage. And I should be getting about five volts with the key on. You want to turn the key on. The car doesn't have to be running, just the key on. 
and right there whoop, it's showing 5.31 volts that's actually good uh, so we're getting the voltage to this plug so now uh, that's telling me we probably have a bad sensor uh, to make sure you can test the resistance on this second wire all the way up to the instrument cluster that requires pulling the instrument cluster out but due to the damage here of this of this car and knowing these these go bad anyway just out of the blue so I'm gonna go ahead and recommend uh, a, uh, a sensor for this and so I've got a sensor here and I'm gonna show you how to test the old sensor next to the new sensor. That way you can kind of tell the resistance between the two, okay? That'll also let you know if you need to test this other side. Okay, so this is the part number for this new sensor. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. 8Z082035 temp sensor. So if uh, you need to go to Volkswagen and get one of these, that's fine. I don't know about aftermarket uh, sensors, so I'm just showing you how to do this on a uh, Volkswagen sensor. So this is our old sensor right here. I'm gonna show you guys, I have this set to uh, resistance and I should get some resistance out of this, okay? So it should read something. So I've got these uh, rigged up right here and they're just, little needle t-pins and what i'm going to do is i'm going to touch this together these two pins and i'm showing basically infinite resistance so basically this has a short in between these two pins here so this is the new sensor here Let's see what reading we got. Come on. So it's about 0.896, all right? So that is telling me that this has some amount of resistance to it. It's not, it's not, uh, or excuse me, some amount of continuity to it. So this uh, seems to be a, a, a good versus bad comparison. So let's put this in and see what we got. See if our uh, reading changes with the scan tool or our reading changes on the dash. Okay, so we got the sensor back on. We have it plugged back up and we crank up the car and guess what? It's gonna read like it did before with a bad sensor in it. That's okay. And I don't want y'all to think I'm sending you down a rabbit hole, but what we're gonna need to do next is we're gonna crank up the car and let it idle for about a half hour, or you can take a drive and it should go back to working. So if you're a technician in a shop doing this, you definitely wanna do this before you give the car back to the customer. It's gonna make you look stupid if you don't. So this is actually in a TSB related to this uh, same problem. So uh, it didn't pull up on my TSB list, but there is a TSB about this. So um, let's go ahead and crank the vehicle up, let it run for a half hour and let's see what happens. Okay, so that does it for our ambient air temperature sensor replacement. So don't forget, you have to calibrate this by letting the car idle for 30 minutes or driving the car over 25 miles per hour for an extended period of time and that sensor will calibrate and everything will go back to working normal. If you have any questions, please leave your questions down in the comments. I love answering my viewers' questions. And also, if this worked for you, give me a like, give me a subscribe. I'm bringing plenty of content to you. Uh, at least one video a week and also I am on Facebook, I am on Instagram, I am on Twitter, I am on VK if you are located in uh, Western Europe, I am on VK so give me a like and a shout out there. I also post a lot of things on those uh, different social media platforms that I, I can't really post on YouTube so give me a shout there. So good luck, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time 